Hey, I'm Chuck McCullough. Welcome to episode three of our Learning to Program in C++ live stream here on YouTube. I hope you're uh, having a great day, and I want to welcome everybody that's joining the live stream, as well as welcome all of you that are joining us on the replay. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you're liking the course and if you want to see anything else. Without further ado, though, let's jump right into it. All right. In this lesson, we're going to look at a sample project that we'll be implementing for a customer. From that project, those requirements, we're going to make a plan, always make a plan, no matter how simple or complicated. We need to do a little bit of design work so that we have a feel for what we're doing. In order to implement this application, we need to learn about conditionals as well as loops in C++. All right, so what's this project? The customer says they need a program that's going to calculate the area of circles, rectangles, and probably in the future, some additional shapes. When we run the program, they want it to first prompt the user for what kind of shape they want to calculate. C for circle, R for rectangle, stuff like that. And then based on what they picked, we'll prompt them for the dimensions, either the radius or the width or the height. Then we'll display the area and the perimeter or circumference, in the case of a circle, of the two shapes or whatever shape they chose. They also want us to do this over and over again until the user enters Q. So when we prompt them for a circle or rectangle, we'll also prompt them for quit, and that's how we quit the program. So let's make a plan. So I'm gonna demonstrate this with a simple flowchart. First of all, what type of shape? So we'll prompt the user, circle or rectangle, C or R, and we'll wait for the user to make that input. Once they make their input, we'll decide, is it one of the three valid characters, quit, rectangle, or circle? If it's quit, then we're going to end the program, terminate. If it's something other than R, C, or Q, we'll just come back and prompt them again and wait for them to do this until they enter the correct uh, response. If it's a C or an R, we'll make a decision. If it's a, a rectangle, then we'll prompt them for the height and the width. If it's a circle, we'll prompt them for the radius. Regardless, we still have to calculate the area of the circle or the rectangle and display the results of those calculations. After we make the calculation, we'll display the area and perimeter, and then go back and display the menu again. So the first thing we need to know how to do is write output. Now, you learned about this last week in last week's session. Remember that C out or standard C out is our standard output device, and we use the insertion operator, the two less than symbols, to insert data onto that stream. And we can insert a, a large variety of different data types onto that stream floats, doubles, characters, strings, integers. A lot of different things can be streamed to an output stream. We can also use one of the special manipulators called indel to add a new line character to the stream anywhere we wish. Indel and cout are both defined in the header file IO stream, so we need to include that at the top of our source file. To read input, we use CN. That's our standard input device. Again, define an IO stream. This time, the arrows go the other direction. We use the uh, greater than symbol to read data or extract data from that stream. The user input is always text. End users interact with the computer using text or strings, but the stream does know how to automatically convert to primitive types, as you saw in the last session when we prompted the user for a circle's radius. Okay, so with those two things, we're ready to create this part of the application where we prompt the user to enter their menu selection and wait for them to make that entry. So as usual, the same old boilerplate stuff with our include, our namespace, and main. Using a C out and a whole bunch of chain together C out statements, terminated with a semicolon, we are presenting our menu. I didn't put an indel at the very end because I want the blinking cursor to be sitting right after the word quit 
so that when the user when we the user has to enter the character, it will show up right after that menu prompt. Now, once the user has entered something, we need to make a decision on what it is that they entered. So we need to talk about if and else. Those are used to create conditional blocks. So inside curly braces, we can have all of the statements that we want to execute if a condition is true. Optionally, the else, a block of statements that will execute if that condition was false. We can also use else if to chain together multiple conditions. So let's implement the logic where we sort out whether it's a Q, a C, or an R. So appending onto the end of the logic that we already have in our application, we'll check first to see if we're supposed to quit. Then we'll check to see if we're going to uh, do a circle or a rectangle. If the user chooses Q, we're going to return zero. The return and then zero is because our function returns an integer. That's the exit code to the operating system. A little beyond the scope of what we're doing right now, we also exit the application when we reach this close brace as well. That also ends the program and the result code of the operating system is garbage because we didn't specify anything else. So it's just whatever random value happens to already be in memory. Also, I'm checking for upper or lowercase characters using the OR operator. Two vertical bars means OR. Equality comparison is done with double equal signs. So if the variable option is equal to the character C or it's equal to the character uppercase C, same thing with R. If either condition is true, then the overall comparison is true and we'll execute what's inside the body. We have a final else here. This would be the case where the user entered something other than Q, C, or R. We'll end up in this block of code. So let's fill in our curly braces with some actual program logic. We'll start with the circle calculation, which you did in last week's session. So let's just paste that code right inside the if uh, or the else if. Make sure that uh, you get it neatly inside the curly braces for the C option, the circle option. All of our variables are declared within those curly braces, so they are scoped to these curly braces. So these variables, pi, radius, area, and circumference, they all go away when we hit the close brace, but that's okay because we don't need them anymore after we get that far. You can even run your program now, hit and see how it works. Let's go ahead and add the code for the rectangle case, very similar. So under the block for the else if for rectangle, we'll declare variables to hold the width and height, prompt the user for that information, calculate the area and the perimeter, and then output the, the results to the end user. And finally, that final else in our sequence of decision making, that will be our unknown option. Here we'll display that to the end user to let them know that we didn't understand what it was they asked us to do. At this point, our program is pretty much working as required. One thing that we're missing is doing it over and over and over again until the user hits Q. To do something repetitively in C++, we use what's known as a loop. C++ has several different keywords for looping. One is the for loop. There, we will iterate across a range of values, like from 1 to 100 or from 50 to 0 by some increment, by 1s, by 2s, by 3s, looping over a range of values. While and do while are used to loop until a condition is met, until a condition becomes false. While the body of the loop will execute 0 or more times, and do while will execute one or more times. So what do we need for our application? Well, we're going to prompt the user to enter C, R, or Q, and we're gonna do that at least once. So probably do while would be appropriate for our application. 
But honestly, do while is pretty uncommon. So I'm going to structure it in a way that the while will actually loop multiple times and we'll structure it using the while loop. So let's just wrap the entire body of what you have inside of main with while true. While true, that's an infinite loop. That's going to run forever. Uh, yes, it will, until we return zero. If the user chooses the Q option, we're going to return immediately because that ends not only the loop, but it ends the entire application. Let's look at the whole thing from top to bottom. So we're including our stuff. We have our main function. Here's our while true, and the curly braces for the while true are for the entire length. There's the close brace for the while true, and there's the close brace for the function main. This is not really an infinite loop because if we encounter the return zero, not only do we exit the loop, we also exit main. Our if else's are stacked up. Each else needs to immediately follow the close brace from the preceding if. The else is optional, as is the if that's associated with the else. So if it's not a Q, if it's not a C, and if it's not an R, we end up in this final else case where we output that it is an unknown option. If we get all the way to the close brace for the while loop, we return execution to the top where we evaluate the condition. The condition is true, it's always true, so we're going to repeat this. If I run my application, we can choose to enter a circle. We'll enter the radius of a circle, let's say four, and I get a reasonable response. Look, the menu has repeated. This time I'll choose R for rectangle, a width of two and a height of three. We get uh, the correct answer as a response, and then I'll hit Q. Oh, let's hit something else. Let's hit K, uh, which it says unknown option. Now we'll try Q, and the program exits. So the uh, we are checking for both upper and lower case for the Q. That way we can type in either one. All right. So I hope you learned something valuable today. If, else loops using the while loop, and we learned a little bit about thinking through a program and executing the application. We've declared more variables, and we've written a complete program with decision-making and loops. Hey, if you'd like to see anything else, or if you have suggestions or comments about this live stream, please leave a comment below. If you're watching this in the replay, leave a comment. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and always, of course, subscribe to our channel so that you're notified when we introduce new videos as well as more live streams. Now, coming up next week, same time, same, same bat time, same bat channel, uh, we're going to expand our knowledge of C++ by talking about functions. Hey, I'm Chuck McCullough. I'll see you next week.